Well, what does it all mean? There's been a lot of talk about divisions and nowhere perhaps politically with the divisions more acute than within the Fine Gael party. With us, two of the deputies who spoke up on different sides. Alice Glenn, looking now at the size of the victory, was it worth all the effort? Oh yes, I think it was, Brian. I'm overjoyed by the result and I thank God for the wisdom and generosity of the Irish people in that they have now enshrined in our constitution the same rights that you and I and everybody else enjoy and that is all, that was the aim and we have achieved it. And I would just like to take the opportunity to say to those people who, for whatever reason, uh, could not see fit to, uh, to say yes, that it is my earnest wish, and I know that I speak for most people who have campaigned in this, that all of their fears will be proven groundless. Uh, and I would hope that there will be no triumphalism. We, we set out to achieve this for the defenceless uh, unborn, and we have done it, and I'm delighted. Monica Barnes, does that conciliatory word at all ease your fears of what might happen given that this is carried? I'm afraid not, uh, Brian. You see, with the best will in the world, and I mean I take the, the sincerity and conviction of what Alice is saying, uh, the enormity of what we were doing and what members of the anti amendment campaign were pointing out was that it really is outside our control what happens once this uh, amendment becomes part of the Constitution, and that in fact it will have to be legally interpreted, so that no matter what goodwill may now be shown, uh, it is not up to Plaque or any other group now, it's outside their control, and any citizen of this country can now proceed and may attempt to have it interpreted in the ways that the medical and legal profession feared. So with all due respects to Alice, I, she can't give that guarantee. Well, I'm not saying, Brian, that I could guarantee it, but I mean, we've had all of these different views expressed. I happen to agree to have assured us that it is highly unlikely. I have confidence in our judicial system. OK, you're both professional politicians. What about the political implications? First of all, looking at the vote, there's a very clear urban-rural split. Now, are you worried about that, Alice Glenn? Uh, no, I'm not worried, Brian. I think uh, for political people it's always a useful exercise to know precisely where the people are at. And they have left us in no doubt at all as to where they are at in this issue. Uh, what it, about other issues, well, related issues? Yes, related issues. Again, I think it's a useful exercise because within our own party, uh, I mean, the country at large know, would know that Monica and myself are, if you like, uh, have extreme positions. Or it would appear we have been projected as having as been two ends of, of, the, of the scale. Well, uh, are you? On this issue, it would appear yes. And if you're talking about issues that may yet uh, have to come, it is very likely that we would find ourselves in that position again. But I have, th throughout the whole campaign, talking to people, uh, Fine Gael people, Fianna Fáil people, and what have you, um, I have uh, more or less come to the conclusion that the people are telling us, they're telling political parties of all kinds, I think, that the last few elections where there were hung dolls and no majorities and what have you, they were saying a plague on both our houses. It would appear now that the issues that people are concerned about are not civil war party politics. There is a new mood in the country that let's will have to be reflected. Let's pick that up with Monica Barnes. If there is that new mood, is it going to affect the moulds of the parties? Are you going to find this division between town and country? Are you going to find increasing division between classes within the towns and within the cities? It certainly has shown up that divide. I mean, that is one of the most significant factors here. Now, with regard to that and where I would be, for instance, within my party, um, whilst it's significant, it's also normal from studies of, 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 of change and attitudes to change insofar as I do believe that Ireland is going through a process of change and change always begins in urban areas and also probably um, whilst I dislike having to bring this uh, in, but it would seem significant as well, uh, among the, the middle classes, and they are the ones that, that move into the change in attitude, and of course in rural areas for a lot of factors and a lot of isolation, one does not get the same change at the same time. Of course, but change normally begins at the top, and the top of any party is leader. Now, the leader of your party happens to be Taoiseach. He came on television. He very clearly indicated what his best views were. The people have said no to him. Isn't that damaging for him? for your party and for the government? 
Well, I took up my stand on that issue, Brian, when we took the vote in the House. I mean, we had discussed it. I had discussed it. No, with but this the isn't Peter. a question for Alice Glenn about your, it's your view, yes, really, of what right. it means for the people at large, those who did support your party, those who might support your party, and those who now say can't make up its mind. Well, I have no doubt that it has had an as adverse effect, and I wish that it hadn't happened. But uh, you see, political life is such that these things happen, and who do it's you blame an ongoing, for it? it's an ongoing process. Well, I don't want to apportion blame anywhere, Brian. Um, I mean, I've taken my stand. If you walked into your kitchen, there was a broken milk bottle. You'd want to know who was responsible. Now, who's responsible for the mess? Well, I don't know, quite honestly. I don't know uh, who decided that we would uh, reject the wording that we had gone to the electorate with. I cannot know that. I have no way. Perhaps sometime in the future I will have, there will be some way of finding out. I just don't know. I know that the Taoiseach took advice from the Attorney General and from uh, the DPP and, and from others that I may not know of. So I'm not Monica in a Barnes, position. Who do you blame? What do you think this means for Garrett Fitzgerald's leadership of the party, of the government? I, I think it means a strengthening of Gareth's leadership because, in fact, what he... And to come back to your original question, who do, who do I blame? I blame the politicians. I blame the politicians uh, for, in fact, giving in to a pressure and making a commitment, that the implications of which they did not know at the time. But the two politicians who did that were the two major party leaders. Yes. Now, if, if, uh, yeah, having said that, I think that what one political leader did had the honesty and integrity to realise the consequences of, of, of that commitment was. and then behaved in an honourable way and attempted to, in fact, redress the damage. And there's no doubt about it. It is damaging. It has been damaging. It is divisive. But if you're asking me about leadership, I think that, for me, leadership is taking responsibility for one's actions and admitting to mistakes if there are and going on from there. And that's what I want Fine Gael to do. Monica Barnes, Alice Glenn, thank you for thank joining you, us. Brian. John.